As an Amazon associate, we earn from qualifying purchases. This podcast is supported by its listeners. If you choose to purchase something using links on our website, we may earn a commission. No books were warped, dog-eared, underlined with purple pen, eaten, cursed, cancelled, burned or otherwise harmed in the making of this podcast. I'm Tom Tolkien and this is The School Reading List, a podcast that recommends books you'll want your children to read and books you'll wish you'd read as a child. To kick off episode 12 of the School Reading List podcast, let's rip open some book post. And first up, this one's our July 2023 Fiction Book of the Month from Otter Barry Books. It's Our Rights, Stories and Poems About Children's Rights, edited by Jake Hope. A plethora of leading contemporary children's writers highlights fundamental rights in this diverse collection of accessible short stories and poems. The right to read, the right to education, the right to be heard and the right to be raised are just some of the aspects of the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child covered in this highly readable and empowering pocket hardback, perfect for Key Stage 2 book clubs and PSHE teaching. Ah. And this one's our July Picture Book of the Month from Greystone Kids, Afterward, Everything Was Different by Gyro Butrego, illustrated by Raphael Yokteng. The Stone Age life of a group of hunter-gatherers is depicted first-hand through the narrative drawings of a young girl who sees and appreciates everything that happens around her. Atmospheric, immersive and thought-provoking, this is an ideal resource for Stone Age topics, a hardback work of art to pore over and a source of inspiration for creative writing in Key Stage 2. A stunning wordless picture book, highly recommended. And our July non-fiction book of the month is from the School of Life, What Are You Feeling?, 20 different feelings, including feeling silly, sad, hurt and upset, are discussed and explained with examples, practical advice and engaging picture metaphors. It's not just a cracking resource for Key Stage 2 PSHE, but What Are You Feeling? is also a great text to encourage children to think for themselves, take ownership of their feelings and consider how to react to situations. Mm. And from HarperCollins books, we have Stucky Ducky Balloon. There's a balloon stuck in one of the trees in the park. But with just one string, how can Bing and Sula both play with it? Perfect for preschool fans of the CBB's hit Bing, Stucky Ducky Balloon is a colourful and engaging story that will encourage children to think about taking turns and sharing. And this one's from Gecko Press for two to five-year-olds. What's That Jack? by Cedric Romardier, illustrated by Vincent Bourgeau. When an object falls from the sky with a big bump, Jack and George are fascinated by it. They roll it, follow it, and think deeply about it. Highly imaginative, What's That Jack? is perfect to discuss with preschool children. Illustrated with a resplendent and vibrant pink throughout, this charming hardback will not go unnoticed. How the Weather Works by Christiane Dorian and Beverly Young, and this one's from Templar Books. Discover our changing skies and climate, the strapline reads, and how the weather works delivers with a highly engaging and fact-packed format for Key Stage 2 children. The water cycle, weather forecasting, extreme weather, climate change and seasons are covered with vibrant colour-filled spreads. Highly recommended for topic work and geography shelves in primary school libraries. Dave Pigeon Kittens by Swapna Hadar, illustrated by Sheena Dempsey. This one's out from Faber Children's this month. Mean Cat is acting strangely, and Dave the Pigeon and Skipper fear the worst. But 
an unexpected turn of events and some very cute kittens force them to see cats in a new light. Fast-paced fun and frequent illustrations make this series ideal for less confident readers in Lower Key Stage 2. And from Hashtag Press for 8 to 12 year olds, A Head Full of Magic by Sarah Morell. When Fleur discovers she can talk to animals, her new powers not only help her to deal with the new girl at school, but create new and unexpected bonds with her West Indian nan. A fascinating blend of cultures, magic, animal worlds and friendships, A Head Full of Magic will appeal to imaginative children in Upper Key Stage 2, looking for a fast-paced and fun read. Sing If You Can't Dance by Alexia Kazali. And this one's a young adult book from Faber Children's. When Venn's plans for a great summer and a great life are thrown into jeopardy, nothing will stop her from pursuing her dreams. Exploring disability and resilience through artistic expression, Sing If You Can't Dance is empowering, genuine and memorable in equal measure. Highly recommended for teens in Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4. Mm. And from Ink Road, Over Emotional by David Fenn. Stephen Percival's emotions get the better of him in spectacular and supernatural ways. This unique debut is the ultimate LGBTQI TikTok superhero rom-com for Generation Z with perhaps the most jaw-droppingly startling and oh-my-god prompting back cover blurb you'll read this year, Over-Emotional is a surefire summer-term secondary school library hit, not to be missed. From Chicken House for 14-plus-year-olds, The Girl Who Grew Wings by Anna Waterworth. When demons take Sefi to the underworld, only her sister Ikari can save her and keep her dangerous secret but she'll need to summon courage and fight and act against her nature as a healer to grow wings and fly. Compelling themes of love, loyalty and peril are interwoven with Greek mythology to create this uniquely powerful story. The Girl Who Grew Wings is a stunningly realised fantasy adventure that will keep older teens gripped. And from Greystone Kids... What Will I Discover? by Tanya Lloyd Kai, illustrated by Rachel Kiki. Why does every humpback whale sing a different sound? And how many dinosaurs roam the earth are just two of the big questions posed in this beautifully illustrated large format picture book. With awe and wonder oozing from every page, What Will I Discover is a joy to read and share with preschool and EYFS aged children. Thank you to all the publishers and publicists for sending us books to review here on this podcast and on our website schoolreadinglist.co.uk. Here's our rundown of great new children's books hitting the shelves this July. The Teen Witch's Guide to Tarot. Calling the Whales by Jasbinda Bilan. I Am Wrigley by Michael Rosen. Busy Little Fingers, Art by Eva Wong Narva. The First to Die at the End by Adam Silvera. Crow by Nicholas Skinner. Dave Pigeon, Kittens by Swapna Haddow. Murder on a School Night by Kate Weston. One Chance Dance by Afua Traore. Henry and the Machine by Isabel Marinov. Sweet Skies by Robin Scott Elliott. Animal Homes Rainforest by Natasha Durley. Robin Hood 7 Prisons, Parties and Powerboats by Robert Muchimore. 
The House Trap by Emma Reed. Against the Odds by Alistair Humphreys. The Wonder Brothers by Frank Cottrell Boyce. The Exiled by Sarah Daniels. Animal Homes Ocean by Natasha Durley. Bedtime Boat by Sital Garazia Chapman. Lil Muffin Drops the Mic by Ramesh Ranganathan. Up in the Canopy, Explore the Rainforest by James Aldred. All That's Left to Say by Emery Lord. Alarm and Luvia's House by Julio Serrano Echeverria. The Bomb, The Weapon That Changed the World by Didier Alcanto. Bath Time by Sandra Boynton. The Skull, a Tyrolean folktale by John Clarson. One of Us is Back by Karen M. McManus. League of Thieves by Sarah Crofton. Alex Neptune, Book 3 by David Owen. A Little Book of the Orchestra by Mary Ald. Bum or Face by Kari Lavelle. And our picture book of the month is Afterward, Everything Was Different by Gyro Butrago and Raphael Yot Tang. Our non-fiction book of the month is What Are You Feeling by The School of Life. And our fiction book of the month is Our Rights, edited by Jake Hope. On your bookmarks, typeset, turn the page. If you're a teacher, librarian or avid bookworm who loves children's or YA books and you'd like to review brand new titles for the school reading list, get in touch by email. We'd love to hear from you. The address is reviews at schoolreadinglist.co.uk. And in this episode of the School Reading List podcast, we're going to have a double feature on book series and, and how important they are to encourage reading for pleasure in your school. And I'll start off by highlighting How to Train Your Dragon, the 20th anniversary edition of which by Cressida Cowell was released just last month. In 20 years of teaching, one extract of How to Train Your Dragon in a comprehension exercise was the only time I remember children enjoying a reading test and the only time I remember children going to the library after the test to search out the book. It's a rare and inspirational book that can leave children so enthused even after an exam. And I remember one student in particular, a reluctant reader, according to his class teacher, who zipped through book one and was moved to write to Cressida Cowell in 2007 as part of a homework task. And Cressida Cowell wrote back. A reading convert from that point onwards, for him, Picking a library book was never again a chore. And books like How to Train Your Dragon should be a cornerstone of any Key Stage 2 reading for pleasure drive. Part of a popular series, many children will simply become hooked and read them all. And it's not only a great option for whole class reading, but How to Train Your Dragon by Cressida Cowell is ideal for guided reading and group reading. It's featured as one of our recommended reads in our Year 4 list. Challenging yet fun, an ideal combination for a chapter book in Years 3 and 4, it's also great for support reading in Year 5. A global publishing phenomenon, the How to Train Your Dragon series has received praise from all corners of children's literature, publishing and education. The Independent said... The adventures of Hiccup, the heroes and the dragons raise big questions about courage, parent-child relationships, friendship, bullying and particularly what is truly valuable. New Statesman added, This series is one of the greatest ever written for those between 8 and 12. And Philosophy Now recognised Cressida Cow with an award for contributions in the fight against stupidity. 
And if you'd like to read more about How to Train Your Dragon, the 20th Anniversary Edition, there's a full review on our website. So let's delve a little deeper and look at how book series can kickstart independent reading and reading for pleasure. Book series can inspire reading for pleasure, boost reading stamina and confidence, and enhance reading comprehension, empathy and fluency. So ensconce yourself in your custom bean-bagged reading corner and let's begin to unpack how and why this happens. Book series possess an undeniable allure for young readers, offering captivating narratives that continue across multiple volumes. One excellent example is the ubiquitous Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling. The enchanting seven books follow the journey of a young wizard, Harry Potter, as he navigates the magical world, battles dark forces and discovers the power of friendship and courage. Reading for pleasure is a powerful catalyst for nurturing lifelong readers. A fantastic example of a book series that cultivates reading for pleasure is Percy Jackson and the Olympians by Rick Riordan. This five-book series introduces readers to Percy Jackson, a demigod and modern-day hero, who embarks on thrilling adventures inspired by Greek mythology. Reading stamina the ability to sustain focus reading for extended periods is vital for academic success and genuine reading enjoyment. The Magic Treehouse series by Mary Pope Osborne is a great choice for building reading stamina. With over 60 books, this series follows siblings Jack and Annie as they travel through time and space on exciting historical and mythical adventures. The Famous Five and Secret Seven by Ina Blyton Beast Quest by Adam Blade, Horrid Henry by Francesca Simon, The Treehouse series by Andy Griffiths, and Horrible Histories by Terry Deary are also worth looking at for your classroom when it comes to building reading stamina. Book series empower young readers by providing a sense of accomplishment as they progress through the story arc. Junie B. Jones by Barbara Park is a wonderful series that boosts reading confidence. Junie Jones, a spirited child, navigates the ups and downs of school and friendships, which resonates with early readers as they see themselves in Junie's experiences. Similarly, Narnia, The Adventures of Tintin, Asterix, Swallows and Timazons and Redwall all produce a sense of achievement when completed. Reading comprehension is the cornerstone of literacy development. A series of unfortunate events by Lemony Snicket is a complex and engaging series that enhances reading comprehension. As readers follow the unfortunate events of the Baudelaire orphans, they decode clues, analyse wordplay and make connections to fully understand the mysterious narrative. Mystery stories in general are a great way to encourage comprehension skills by stealth. Nancy Drew, The Diamond Brothers, Enola Holmes and The Secret Lake series are also definitely worth a look. Book series often feature diverse characters facing challenges and emotions, providing a window into different perspectives and life experiences. Diary of a Wimpy Kid by Jeff Kinney is a relatable series that cultivates reading empathy. The protagonist, Greg Heffley, shares his humorous and sometimes awkward journey through middle school, allowing readers to empathise with the universal experiences of growing up. Be sure to check out Kid Normal, Tom Gates, Big Nate and Wayside School as well. Reading Fluency the ability to read effortlessly with appropriate speed and expression, is essential for comprehension and enjoyment. The Cat in the Hat series by Dr. Zeus is a classic example that enriches reading fluency. With its rhythmic and rhyming text, this beloved series helps young readers develop fluency and rhythm in their reading. Book series also create a sense of belonging within reading communities, with young readers sharing their experiences and excitement for upcoming releases. The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins is such a series that sparked a global reading community. 
Through dystopian adventures, readers found common ground in discussions about survival, courage, and ethical dilemmas. Consider also The Giver Quartet, Divergent, Robert Muchimore's Robin Hood books, and the Wings of Fire series. Book series also pique children's curiosity to explore related books and genres independently. The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis is a series that encourages that independent reading. As young readers venture into the magical land of Narnia through seven books, they discover various genres such as fantasy, adventure and allegory. Book series also present characters that encounter challenges, failures, triumphs, and offer powerful lessons in resilience and perseverance. Matilda by Roald Dahl is a heartwarming example that fosters a growth mindset. A gifted girl, she overcomes adversity and uses her intelligence to create a brighter future for herself and others, and also inspires children to read a lot of other Roald Dahl books. The enchanting worlds and intriguing plots within book series often spark children's imagination and creativity. The Land of Stories by Chris Colfer is a series that sparks that creativity. Readers join twins Alex and Connor on fairy tale adventures where they meet classic characters and explore imaginative realms. Book series often feature relatable protagonists facing challenges and making significant contributions. The Babysitter's Club by Anne M. Martin is an empowering series that celebrates young voices. The club's diverse members demonstrate leadership, entrepreneurship and the power of friendship as they navigate the world of babysitting. And there you have it, a few compelling reasons and examples to consider when looking at why book series in children's literature inspire reading for pleasure, reading stamina, confidence, comprehension, empathy and fluency. Make sure your next class embarks on extraordinary reading adventures, one series at a time. Here's a selection of exciting new book tasters sent to us by new and self-published children's authors this month. Have you ever wanted to be something like a skateboarding superstar and everybody tells you, you can't, you can't do it, you're never going to make it? Well, that's what happened to Katie Cat. In my book called Katie on Broadway by Ella English, she's a cat who just wants to sing. She spends all her time singing in her backyard and she just gets nothing but hate for it. Here's an extract. Where did that acorn come from? I yelped, rubbing my head. Jerry the squirrel poked his head out of the hollowed out trunk. Stop that screeching, he cried, shooting acorns at me. It's singing, I said. I dug my claws into the branch. I didn't want to fall. You know what, Jerry yelled. You're a cat. Cats can't sing. So check out my book, Katie on Broadway by Ella English. You can get it on Amazon. Hi, my name is Saxon North Cornell, and I'm the author of the WYSIWYG's children's picture book series. So who are the WYSIWYGs? They're a modern, blended family of mixed heritage, full of love and happiness. Mummy and Daddy are kept on their toes by their son Wizzy and their daughter Munch. The children are always full of energy, and they love to laugh and play. Every day with the WYSIWYGs is as bright and colourful as their hair. Movie Night with the WYSIWYGs is the first book of the WYSIWYGs book series. It captures the charm of family life, and the fun of movie nights at home. Mummy and Daddy prepare some snacks for movie night, whilst Wizzy makes a cosy space with a little help from Munch. But which movie will the WYSIWYGs watch? Movie Night with the WYSIWYGs is available now on Amazon in paperback or ebook. Don't forget to visit my website, wizzywigs.com.
I wish I could talk. Then I could ask my best friend Sophie why she keeps leaving me at home all day. I think she's found a new best friend. Meet Seamus, the golden retriever, in the dog novel On My Back Paws by Anna Scoyles. A fun story about friendship, trust and being who you are, not who others want you to be. Teachers, librarians and parents can get a free downloadable resource, a children's activity pack on my back paws themed. Visit bio.link forward slash Anna S to claim. That's B-I-O dot L-I-N-K forward slash A-N-N-A-S for Seamus to claim. Check out On My Back Paws by Anna Scoyles today. Available now as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook narrated by the author. That's me, On My Back Paws, available to order from bookshops and libraries. Suitable for 7 Plus, also enjoyed by adults. Visit bio.link forward slash Anna S. <laughs> If you'd like to get in touch and leave a recorded shout out about your upcoming self-published children's book, have a look at our podcast webpage for more details. And on our website, we have a page dedicated to book series for children and teens, and the address is in the program notes. Let's have a deeper dive into some of these great books. And for younger children, Zoom Series by What on Earth Books is a great non-fiction series option. Zoom Building Site Adventure follows Maxi as he sets off to build a skyscraper. He organises the machinery, clears the site, drills the foundations, builds a metal frame, connects the pipes and paints the walls. With clever cut-out windows, pop-ups and punchy colours throughout, there's plenty for children aged 1 to 7 to interact with on every page. What's really impressive is how the building process is described accurately with child-friendly clarity. Nothing is dumbed down, which is ideal for children interested in STEM. The series includes Zoom Building Site Adventure, Zoom Farm Adventure, Zoom Space Adventure and Zoom Ocean Adventure. Socks by Nick Sharrett This fabulous series features every type, colour, wearer and pattern of socks and pants, all brightly illustrated and set to memorable rhyming text. Each book is great fun to read with your child or to read aloud in nursery or EYFS classes. These are books that will be requested again and again, and the use of repetition and language will be a great incentive for younger children to identify and sound out the words independently. It's not just socks, the series also includes pants, more pants, party pants, and animal pants. Mm. Isadora Moon by Harriet Muncaster. Ideal to spark children into reading short chapter books independently and encourage reading for pleasure, the books in this series are perfectly suited the six to eight year olds. With a fairy mum and a vampire dad, Isadora is magical and unique. In the first of the series, Isadora has a conundrum go to fairy school like her mum or join a vampire school like her dad. The quirky illustrations and funny plots will appeal to children in years one and two who enjoy fantastic adventures. The Spiderwick Chronicles by Tony Ditalizzi. Comprising five books, this fantasy sequence follows the lives of the Grace children, Simon and Jared, who are twin brothers, and their older sister, Mallory. After a series of strange events and cryptic puzzles, Jared uncovers a hidden book, Arthur Spiderwick's Field Guide to the Fantastical World Around You. Reading the book opens their eyes to a magical world of fairies and goblins, some friendly and some not. This collection may well sort out bedtime stories for imaginative seven-year-olds for up to a year. The Two Terrible Vikings series by Francesca Simon. This madcap series of Vikings-themed adventures Starring naughty twin children Hack and Whack is perfect for children who need high-interest, 
read aloud first chapter books in years two or three, with funny dialogue and characters such as Dirty Ulf, Elsa Goldhair, Twisty Pants, and Grunt Iron Skull, these books are ideal to read around the class or for a teacher to read aloud. In the second of the series, Hack and Whack juggles starting a new school with trying to outwit a really smelly berserker who's moved in next door. Read these books or may your nose turn into a turnip. Dog Man by Dav Pilkey This lively and easy-to-read series of comic book-style stories with one idea per picture may well be your seven-year-old's next favourite set of books. This book will appeal to the most reluctant readers in Key Stage 2 and is ideal for reading independently or aloud. This series is also perfect for children who enjoy reading lots of books by the same author, and the Dogman series is a good starting point for less able readers who are moving away from structured reading schemes. Ooh. Pages and Co. by Anna James Tilly loves to spend time in her grandparents' bookshop, Pages and Co. One day, while she's reading, she discovers the magic of book wandering as characters from her favourite books start appearing lifelike. In the bookshop, characters Tilly can follow back into a world of fiction. Can she use this newfound power to work out what happened to her mother in the past, or will she find herself embroiled in hidden dangers straight out of the pages of her stories? Perfect for children in Key Stage 2, Tilly's adventures span four volumes. My brother is a superhero by David Solomons. In the time it takes for 11-year-old Luke to have a quick wee, the world changes. He returns to find his brother has been given world-conquering powers by an all-powerful alien. Life is so unfair. This multi-award-winning series will capture the imaginations of Key Stage 2 children. Addictively funny, this series is perfect for reluctant readers who need fast-paced and funny stories to keep them interested. Sequels include My Gym Teacher is an Alien Overlord, My Evil Twin is a Supervillain, My Cousin is a Time Traveller, and My Arch Enemy is a Brain in a Jar. Inkworld by Cornelia Funk When Meggie's dad reads a book to her, neither of them anticipate one of the evil characters would leap from the page into their home. Meggie must not only learn to survive, but also find a way to put the super-nasty villain Inkheart back within the pages where he belongs. But Inkheart has very different ideas. A must-have set of books for Key Stage 2 libraries and the ultimate bedtime series for 7-11 to year olds if you dare. Mm. Adventures in Time by Dominic Sandbrook This series of novels by historical fiction writer Dominic Sandbrook will appeal to independent readers in years 6 to 8 who like to immerse themselves in the stories and pivotal figures at the heart of a history topic. Presented as narrative non-fiction... They'll also be extremely useful for teachers in Key Stage 2 looking for extension material to challenge 9-11 to year olds, including character studies, empathy and topic-related comprehension texts for literacy lessons and impetus material to prompt pupils' individual research and home learning. The series comprises Alexander the Great, the First World War, the Six Wives of Henry VIII, as well as the Second World War, which is featured in our book series page. Ah. Cherub by Robert Muchmore A group of intrepid secret agents aged between 10 and 17 run an undercover clandestine organisation called Cherub that protects society and catches the most dangerous criminals away from the public eye. It's rollercoaster-paced, white-hot, dialogue-driven action with an addictive blend of tech twists and tension. This epic series currently stands at 17 books 
And if your school library keeps loan statistics, expect these books to take permanent residence at the top of your top 10 list. Track by Jason Reynolds. Set in the competitive world of track athletics, the lives of Ghost, Sonny, Patina and Lou, four very different people, are charted as they attempt to overcome difficulties and challenges to reach the Junior Olympics. Each volume is an uplifting, emotional and inspiring story. Accessible and relatable, this is an excellent series to entice reluctant readers in Key Stage 3. And if you'd like to have a look at these in more detail, the address for our book series page is in the programme notes. If you'd like to get in touch, use the hashtag SRLpodcast on Twitter or drop us a line using the contact form or messaging button on our website schoolreadinglist.co.uk. And all the books lived happily ever after. The End. <laughs>